Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am going to do a uh, tutorial on uh, playing Stratomatic Football basic version, uh, Solitaire, and then I will explain the differences between doing Solitaire and doing um, and playing head to head, um, which are really kind of straightforward. But um, anyway, um, yeah, this came from a viewer comment uh, uh, asking to um, if I could go through and show how I do my solitaire uh, basic uh, game play for the football. And I'm not sure that there are any um, tutorials on the internet. So I uh, decided it's a good idea. So I think I will go ahead and do that. Now, I have the 2008 set. Um, that's the only set that I have. And um, I'm currently doing a 2008 Bears season, if you would care to go check that out. Um, but, um, uh, right, but for this, the purposes of this game, we're going to do the past year's Super Bowl teams, but from 2008. So it's the 2008 Kansas City Chiefs against the 2008 San Francisco 49ers. I'm not going to play the whole game. I'm just going to show you um, different things that will come up and how and what you should refer to when you are doing the um, when you're going through the process of playing the game. So the first thing is the the. The alignment of the teams, you know, what you what you need, what basic card you need. Now, over here, you can see I've got the defenses. Um, there are three defensive cards for every team. Um, the um, And this is the basic side. So, like, this is what the basic side of the card looks like right here. Um, but the uh, they're generally, they... they Stratomatic gives them an overall rating, and Kansas City's defense against the pass was poor, and against the run was also poor. And you will have three cards. One card will have uh, the two major passes on it, short and long. One card will have the two major runs on it, line bucking off tackle, and then the other card will have end run and flat pass. Um... And so you refer to those um, on a roll of uh, four, five, or six on the on the D six um, column die. It's kind of like in the baseball how you four, five, and six are on the pitcher, one, two, and three are on the hitter's card, and that's the same basic premise here. One, two, and three on the D six column die would be on the uh, you would refer to the offensive player card. And then you just roll the two dice and you go down the column for whatever result you're looking at. So here are the general cards that you're going to need for um, each team. There's the special team card. So here, using the example of San Francisco, this is San Francisco's special team card. It has the uh, punting on it. It has the kickoff and punt returns because there are kickoff and punt returns where you would have to refer to the um, the defense card or the, the uh, kicking team's card. And then it has the field goal kicker on it as well. And, um, and the penalties you would ignore because I'm going to do this without penalties. Um, I think the uh, I, I'll I'll explain what the difference is when you try to do penalties, but I don't do penalties in my um, in my basic season. And you also, according to the rules of Stratomatic, you uh, don't need to do penalties in the basic play either. So that's the uh, special teams card. Then you have a split end flanker. Um, in this one in this case, this guy could be either one of them. Um, and then there's another split end flanker. So for either of these two, you could have them interchangeably be the split end or the flanker. You've got a halfback card who has a receiving card. And on the other side, he has his running card. 
And, uh, and also I will point out on the running cards, you've got right and wrong, and then you also have keyed. We do not play with keyed in the uh, basic version, at least I don't. Um, I don't, and I don't think you use that unless you're playing the uh, advanced version. So then you've got the fullback, and uh, there's the fullback's card. That's his running card. There's his pass receiving card. Um, the tight end, you would have a tight end, so there's the tight end. And then here is the quarterback. The quarterback has his passing side, so there's, and this is Sean Hill. There's the passing part of his card. And then he also has a running card. A running card not only because of the fact that a quarterback can do a line buck or an end run, but also because at times he may have to do a must run where he's trying to pass and he's flushed out of the pocket and he has to run. And so you can see on his passing side on right at times, depending on the pass short and long, there is a result that says must run. When you get a must run, you would flip it over and you would roll the two, the two dice again, the two column going down the column and see what happens with his must run. So that's the basic cards that you would need um, for each team. Um, in solitaire, what you do is, or at least what I do, is you've got your play selector right here. And so here's the play selector. And as you can see, this um, has uh, offense and um, the pass receiving or the runner. So if you do like a, you could do a flat pass to the tight end. So you put in your play. Now, if you're playing somebody, what you do is usually you take the cards. What I do is I take the cards and I put them, you know, up in front of my play selector. And then I, um, and then I'll put like flat pass to the tight end covering it up and then I ask the other person whether they guessed pass or run. But when you're doing it solitaire, you have to, um, I mean, what I do is I'm, I make my own charts for um, what the guesses are. And here is an example of that. This is the Bears defensive guess chart versus, versus a passing team. So you can see I write down situ different situations and then I give um, a designation on a 20-sided die, this 20-sided die here, for what they will guess um, in various situations. Now, it doesn't really matter what my chart says. You can make up your own charts depending on how you feel um, a team would, would do. So, like, this is the Bears defensive guess chart versus a passing team. So on first and 10... I, I put 1 to 12 pass because a passing team is probably more likely to pass even uh, when, you know, it's first and 10. And then on first and more than 10, it goes up to 1 to 14. You know, that general thing, you get the idea. Again, it doesn't really matter what my chart says. What matters is um, what you would feel like doing and then make up a chart so that you can tell what the defense would be guessing um, and then you, and then for both teams, you would decide what the offense would be. So when I play the bears, I, I decide what the bears offense is going to be, what their offensive play is going to be and who it's going to go to. But I also do that for the other team. And then I roll for what my bears defense is going to guess. So that's basically a, a quick overview of how that would be done. So now putting it into action, Let's say that the San Francisco uh, 49ers are kicking off to the Kansas City Chiefs. So when you kick off, you only need the two dice. So you use the two dice, and we have an 11. Um, and so on an 11 on San Francisco's kickoff, you can see you go to the, you go to the kickoff section here, and you go down to 11 and you can see that it is to the goal line and to the number one back. So 
you refer to that, the kickoff goes to the number one back for Kansas City, and now you go to Kansas City's specialist card, and if you turn that over, that's where the kick returns. I forgot to show you this the first time. This is where the kick and the punt returns are. So it's, the, uh, it's to the goal line number one. So it goes to the goal line, and the number one back on the kickoff, we're looking right here. And so you would roll for that, and that's a roll of seven. So now if you see on seven, it says to refer to the opponent's kick return card. So now we're back looking at the San Francisco kick return card. Um, and you can see right under extra points here in the middle, right under extra points, it has the, the, the various, the kick and punt returns. And those will happen on seven, eight, and 12 for... Um, any any kickoff or punt. And in this case, it was seven. So you can see that seven on San Francisco's kick re kickoff return is 24 yards. And they caught it at the goal line, so it comes out to the 24. So it would be first and 10 for Kansas City at the 24. Now, another thing I needed to point out and I did not uh, mention earlier is the time card. And this is, the, this is what your time card looks like. Huh, did I already lose that? Oh, here it is. So, um, this is this is the field here. I, I ignore that part. But here, up here, this is the time card. And this is a little uh, cardboard token that you would put on the time card to mark each circle as it goes. Um... What I do for recording purposes to try to get the game in in a timely manner is, and for I've, I've found for realistic statistics, is I just alternate um, two and three. So I'll move it two. Well, for kicks, I move it one. For any kick or kick return, just move it one space. So it would only go from, you could say, right here, 15. And it would only go to 4:45 on that kick return, but on um, uh, I think in the directions they say that it, uh, it it that it's three spaces. It goes three dots for a running play or a completed pass, and it only goes two for an incomplete pass. I think that's what it says, and I don't think you can go wrong doing that. There's also a possibility, and you know, and again. This is all how you feel like it, it's more realistic. Um, you know, everybody has their house rules, but there is also a possibility that it could be two, that it only moves two on a running play or a uh, completed pass and one on an incomplete pass. So um, anybody who's more familiar with it, leave a comment, you know, in the comments uh, section. Um, which one it really should be or which one you think it is or um, how you play it. But that's how I do it. That's generally how I would do it. So now we now it's time to run a play. We have Kansas City with the ball. And I am going to... Uh, I'm going to do an end run with the halfback. So... What I will do is I will find the halfback card, and that's going to be Jamal, no, not Jamal Charles. Uh, that's going to be Larry Johnson. So now we've got Larry Johnson here. This is the front of Larry, this is uh, Larry Johnson's running card. So this is very likely what we're going to be looking at if we roll one, two, or three on the purple dice. And if we roll four, five, or six, we will be looking at San Francisco's end run defense. So let's roll the dice. Um, let's well, first you would roll the twenty sider to see what the defense is guessing. So we know we're going to end run with the halfback, and let's just say for um, for um, you know expedience purposes here, let's just say San Francisco guesses run one to ten, and they guess pass eleven to twenty on first down. So it's a five. So San Francisco is looking for the run. So we would roll the dice at that point. 
and we have a 5-3. Now, 5 is on the defense card because 4, 5, or 6 is on the defense card. So we're referring to San Francisco's end run defense and looking at number 3 because it was a 5-3 roll. So if we look at San Francisco's end run defense and you look at number 3, you can see it says short gain. So short gain, there is a, um, there's a chart for short gains, for long gains, for interception returns. And um, so that is this chart right here. Let me try to get the whole thing in here in the, in the view. Um, but you can see it's got interception returns there. It's got short gains, long gains, and you would refer to this. So we know we just came up with a short gain. So we'll roll the dice and that's a five. So you look at short gain five and you can see right there that short gain five is 17 yards. So Kansas City just gained 17 yards on that, on that pass. And I don't even know where were we at the 24. So 20 and 4. So they gained 17 yards is 1, 10, 5, 6. So there we are. So we got a first and 10 now here. And by the way, I want to point out the field that I have here. I had this field made myself um, through Inked Gaming. And I also made the first down marker myself with cardboard once I got the field and could find out what 10 yards was going to be on the field. So um, you can, they, the, you know, there is a field version that you can use that's right next to the timer. But um, I like to use the nice field, especially for the recording purposes. So anyway, there, that's, that's the running play. So um, we did a running play and then you saw what we gained or what the play was. So now we're going to go flat pass to the tight end. And for a flat pass, um, it's the same general concept. Um, we would roll again, and they, Kansas City has a first down. So again, it's 1 to 10 run, 11 to 20 pass. And that's a 10. So San Francisco is still looking for the run on this first down, which means that they've guessed wrong. So... Um, Kansas City, you would go and find their quarterback, and that's Tyler Thigpen. So here's his passing card, and you can see on the flat pass, there's the flat pass, right and wrong, and you would refer, if it's on his card, you would refer to the wrong column because, can, because San Francisco guessed wrong. So we roll the dice again, and that's, a, that's an eight. And so they did guess wrong, or it is on Thigpen's card, and on eight, you can see that the result is, I hope you can see there, that the result is receiver. And it would be receiver either way. But when we refer to the receiver, then what, what's going to happen is we're going to look at the receiver wrong column because they guessed wrong. So you find the tight end, Kansas City's tight end, and that's Tony Gonzalez. So you can see he has a flat pass, a short pass, and a long pass column. And we would refer to the flat pass wrong. And you would roll again. So now we roll again, and that's a 10. So if you look at 10, you can see that he picks up 13 yards because um, the San Francisco defense was wrong in what they guessed. It would have been 11 if they had been right, but instead it's 13. So Kansas City has it first and 10 at the 45, and they are moving the ball. So that's the basic concepts there. Um, you, um, let's see, we've got Tyler, get Tyler Thigpen's card. So you got an end run. We're going to put in an end run again with the halfback. Again, we're going to roll the 20-sided die to see what, they guess, and that's an 11, so they're wrong again. They're guessing pass on first down. So we have an end run with the halfback. And so we will go find the halfback, and that's, uh, and that's Larry Johnson again. And now we roll the dice, and that is a 4-3. So this is going to be on the end run defense for San Francisco. And it's a three. So if you can see, here's the end run defense. 
for San Francisco, and you look at three, and that is a short gain. Also note that when it's on the defense card, there is no right or wrong. It's just one result. Whatever happens, happens. So that was a short gain, and you can see that we, again, we will refer to the short gain. There's the short gain chart, and that's a four. So short gain on four is 18 yards, as you can hopefully see right there. So Kansas City gains 18 yards. This is really crazy because Kansas City is like not being stopped by San Francisco. So that is, there's the basics of how you play the game. Um, I've showed passes, I've showed runs. Now, the way that you would do it, um, if you were doing, uh, if you were using penalties, is I don't know where my X dice is, but there is a die that comes with the game that has an X and a D on it. And you would roll that with these three dice. And if X comes up, there's a penalty. Um, and then there's a penalty. There is a, uh, there's a penalty chart right here on the back of that particular chart. And then you would roll to see what happens on the penalty. Um, depending on uh, whether it was a run or whether it was a pass or whether it was a kickoff or a field goal attempt or whatever. They have the different sections for it there. So you would refer to that, but like I said, generally the, ru the rules in Stratomatic say you don't need to use penalties. I don't do it in my um, Bears season that I televise because it would take longer to get through a game with using penalties. So I decided not to do it. Um, but it is an option, and there's a basic way to do it in the basic version. Um, and it makes it a little bit more realistic. Um, the Bears defeated some teams that were actually a lot better than they were um, in 2008. And I have to guess that they did that only because they had um, the, the, there were probably penalties and more turnovers than would have happened in the other game in our game. Now, that's another thing you can have interceptions. Now, the interceptions are pretty clear cut. Um, here is Tyler Thigpen, and you can see on 11, if you were to roll an 11 for some of these um, play results, it says interception. And like on flat pass, it says interception five yards, two to five and X six to 12. So that means it's intercepted on the roll of two dice, two to five, and it would be incomplete on six to 12. So that is what can happen there with the interceptions. You also occasionally will have a fumble come up. And if you look on Larry Johnson's card, uh, they fumbles usually happen at five, both on the defense and on the running backs cards. So there you we, we look at Larry Johnson's card and you can see that, like, for instance, on line buck, he has a fumble, a zero right, two to four and zero yards, five to twelve. So that basically you roll the two dice again. And if you get a two to four, he fumbles the ball. And 5 to 12, he doesn't fumble it. He just gets zero yards. And then recovering the fumble, for the offense, it's 2 to 6 or 12, they recover. Otherwise, the defense recovers. So that is, and I think that's also in the directions. That's in the instruction booklet, if you ever read that. Um, you know, if you go through that, you'll notice that it says that the offense recovers 2 to 6 or 12. There is also a, uh, there's so, like, there's an interception return chart that you would refer to also right here, as you can see. So if there was an interception, you would move it downfield the number of yards that the interception occurred if the roll falls within that range. And then you roll the two dice again to see what the return was. Um... So let's see, we've got Larry Johnson. We're going to do an, again, let me, I'm going to do a short pass to the flanker. So, um, let's do that. 
Short pass to the flanker. Again, uh, it's first and 10 for Kansas City, so let's uh, roll the dice. 1 to 10. They are looking for the run, so they're looking for the pass. And this is a short pass. So you've got a 3-5. So you look at um, Thigpen's card, because it's 1, 2, or 3. So it's on his passing card. And you go down to five, and you can see that um, on five, he completes the pass on short pass for 11 yards. And also notice that he completes it whether it's right or wrong, which a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the running back, well, the running backs will generally have a lower number of yards right than they will wrong. But a quarterback will have generally the same number of yards on short and long pass. Um whether you're right or wrong, on certain readings. So they got 11 yards, and so they go down to the 21. And you can see they're moving through the uh, San Francisco defense like melted butter. So um, let's try a short pass. Well, no, let's try an end run, another run to the halfback. And that would be... Um, that would be Larry Johnson again. So we roll the dice. You can see it's four. So they did guess the run this time. And it's on Larry Johnson's card. And that's a roll of seven. So now you can see end run on seven. That he gets, um, he gets zero yards because the San Francisco defense guessed right. And it was on Larry Johnson's card. Otherwise, he, he would have gotten six. Now, there is a three in parentheses. I don't know what that means. I generally don't use the parentheses. It may be, a, uh, it may be an advanced thing. Um, I, I don't know. But I don't use what, what's in the parentheses. I just use the regular reading. So in that particular case, that's the first time San Francisco stopped them. He got zero yards. But um, that is my general overview of how to play the basic version of the game. I hope I explained everything that could have come up. Um, I think if you read the instructions and then you just and you watch the video and maybe you go back and look at certain um, sections of it, you basic you get the basic idea. Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to, I mean, there obviously there is, but as far as like some of the things like uh, making up what um, the defense would guess, that's just up to you um, based on the teams that you play or your preferences or what you think it should be. Um, so it's, and, you know, it's, and it's like the baseball or the hockey. There are certain house rules different people have. And it's just up to personal preference in a lot of cases. But that's the general overview of how to play it. Um, I hope I explained it well. Um, I hope it was informative. But for right now, it's Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.